everybody doing? Conspiracy theories. Now there has been one commenter. Let's figure out your name because you've commented for the past 12 days in a row. I was going to let it go on for a while longer, but I thought this would be a nice video to uh, to do for today and record. So Jack Witto two two seven four. Hello. Hello, welcome to the channel if I haven't responded to you previously. You're currently on, well when you're seeing this it will be 13, 14, this will be the 15th day. Wow, fair dues, fair dues, two and a half weeks, or two and a bit weeks, two weeks in a day. You've been commenting, asking for these types of things. Now, before we do start, make sure you click that like button and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like this type of content, we are so close to 19,000 subscribers, and then, like I say, we're on our way to 20k. I've got my Pepsi, I've had my breakfast, see you asleep downstairs. So, without further ado, we're gonna get into these 12. Uh, 12 footballing conspiracy theories. I'm not gonna lie. I struggled to find anything that was like relevant. But this is from a post in 2022 on the Best Choice Sports Facebook page. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought it'd be a good read. And you know, a few of them we might discuss. So, without further ado, let's get into it. 12 crazy football conspiracy theories. A situation that everyone took for face value just for someone, somewhere, to sow a seed of doubt with a wild claim and change the entire status quo. Like, for example, the suggestion that Nike forced Ronaldo, as in R9, not Cristiano, to play in the 1998 World Cup final. Once we tell you more about that one, you'll never think about France 98 the same way. We've gathered some of the craziest football conspiracy theories around from articles, Reddit threads and Twitter debates and more, so you can lose yourself in the idea that the football that you thought you know doesn't really exist. Number one. Brazil and France. He was left out of the squad for the Paris final after suffering a seizure the night before. So a seizure the night before the final. I'd have been one years old at this point by the way. Well, not even one years old. However, there was a shock when R9's name was there in the starting lineup. Nike had sponsored the Brazilian forward and it had been suggested that him to play, although he couldn't prevent the France winning 3-0. Um, I think this is one of those things where if R9 felt comfortable playing, he probably would have wanted to play. I mean, being one of the best strikers of that generation, if not the best striker of that generation, one of the most infamous goal scorers in world football, he probably wouldn't wouldn't have 
wanted to miss the 98 World Cup final against France on French territory. So really, if I was him and I was like, I've had a seizure, but I feel fine. If the doctors have cleared you, I'd have wanted to play. But I suggested he was left out of the squad. So why all of a sudden was he in the lineup? Now I can also understand the point. Um. Pardon me. Of Nike, or the, the viewpoint that Nike maybe will have gone. No, no, no. He needs to play. If you remember that famous iconic image or video of R9 in his Brazil top, you know, I don't know if you like this or whatever. Big smile, the R9 haircut. It was a big, big thing for Nike, wasn't it? It was like as, as big as, well not as big as Tiger Woods in his red polo, you know. They've had some iconic athletes, but that was one especially in that era, that was just boom. So I can also understand them wanting to like try and not force him to play, but persuade him that actually you're okay. So I don't know about that one. Moving on to number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. South Korea versus Spain in the 2002 World Cup was fixed. South Korea beat Italy and Spain back-to-back on -back route to the semi-finals of the 2002 World Cup. They benefited from a number of questionable refereeing decisions in their penalty shootout win over Spain and the integrity of the match officials has been doubted by some ever since. I have actually watched clips of this, and I am very much in the boat that South Korea fixed the game. I think that some of them questionable refereeing decisions were a hell of a lot more than questionable. There was some outright disgraceful refereeing. Like, we moan about the refereeing quality in the Premier League and VAR and this, that, the other. If you go and watch that game, it was out outrageously bad like I'm talking some clear cut opportunities that should have been yellow and red cards just waved and brushed under the carpet by the referee some terrible decisions number three number three number three Steven Gerrard missed a penalty on purpose to get Roy Hodgson sacked would the captain of Liverpool really miss a penalty on purpose just to get his manager sacked? Some have raised the question after Gerrard missed from 12 yards against Blackburn in 2011. The thought is that Gerrard placed his hand over the Liverpool crest to suggest he was only doing what was best for the Reds. I don't think it was in Steven Gerrard's heart to get a manager sacked on purpose. Regardless of how a manager's performing, the players should always play the best of their ability and try and win for the club. Steven Gerrard would, would arguably fight for the club more than he'd fight to get rid of a manager, in my opinion. So I don't believe that to be true. And the fact that he put his hand over the Liverpool crest just suggests that he's the Liverpool fan that everyone thinks and knows that he is. Of which he'll put his hand over the crest just to show his support for the club. Moving on. Number four. Number four. Neymar wasn't really injured at the 2014 World Cup. Neymar was denied a, a shot. suffering a lumbar vertebrae fracture. I always forget that happened. Like, I always thought the break in your back was like really bad. I don't know. Yet some pointed to a video of the Brazilian apparently walking around in his house pain-free as proof that he was, for one reason or another, faking it. A 
again, I don't think it was faking it, really. Personally, also, if it's his house, how, how is he in his house? If they're in the training camps during the World Cup, I'd question the, uh, the reliability and validity of that video itself. On top of that, unless he's obviously been sent home after like having surgery or just, I don't know, whatever. Um, I think Neymar was having the World Cup of his dreams. Is that the one where they beat Germany 7-0? Germany beat them 7 0. Yeah. Seven one. Germany beat Brazil seven one. That's outrageous by the way. <sighs> Had a Hulk Paulinho. Oscar Fred. Fred played in that's outrageous. Marcelo was still playing. Where's love closer? Some absolute top, top ballers, by the way. That Brazil World Cup and South Africa World Cup are two of the best ever World Cups that have ever existed ever. And I think they're going to be overshadowed by a few recently. Anyway, um, I, I don't think that Neymar will have, uh, will have been faking that. He absolutely dragged Brazil through that. He was carrying them on the back, literally. And these types of players don't miss these types of games on purpose. I don't think, like, there's not a chance Neymar thought, ah, fuck it. We're in Brazil. It is our home World Cup. I'm just going to miss the semis. Nah, not a chance. Anyway, moving on. Number five. Number five. Goalkeepers have complained about balls at the World Cup more than once, with the 2010 Jubilani ball irking many players. England goalkeeper David James said, The ball is dreadful, it's horrible, but it's horrible for everyone. Meanwhile, Brazilian Julio Cesar said it was like a ball that you'd buy in a supermarket, or as us British folk would call a floater. Is this done on purpose to inflate the number of goals scored at the tournament or to increase the sale of the balls? Who knows? Um, for one, I think Adidas had definitely altered production for that football. They had tried something different, whether on purpose to, 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 to do whatever. The whole point of Adidas is to sell footballs and to sell stuff. That's that's their aim. I don't think they intentionally made it horrible or had the forefront to go more go I mean they probably did actually thinking about it. Maybe they did think, you know, the, the weirder this football is and the more it moves, the more entertaining these shots can be. The more I don't know. I suppose it's probably true, thinking about it. Like the whole point is to invent something or to create something that adds jeopardy to the game, you know. There is... The whole point of selling footballing equipment is to either make the job of the striker or the, the goal scorer easier or make the defending harder. Does that make sense? Just elevate the levels of the game. So surely they do want more goals so that gets more sales. And if you really think back to it, I couldn't tell you the name. Because they give like each like each football an individual name for any of the Champions League or World Cup footballs. Other than the Jubilani. Because it was so controversial and it was such 
in the forefront of like footballing news that Adidas obviously did a thing like if you try and buy a Jubilani now if I go into shopping an official Jubilani I mean, a used one at the World Cup is a thousand pounds. This one here on eBay for 45 quid. Size 5. It's just a replica. It's not even the right one. It's probably so difficult. Yeah, look at that. I mean, a two-in-one Jubilani set. Oh, an individual actual Jubilani is 315 quid. They had some of the most outrageously perfect footballs. That is like the epitome of like iconic footballs in my eyes. Either way, let's move on. Number six. Number six. Number six. Match of the day commentators know what's going to happen. Match of the day host Gary Lineker has refuted this theory before, but it still continues to do the rounds. The accusation is that commentators actually do the voice work in a studio after the match has already taken place, so they know exactly what's going to happen. Indeed, it's rather eerie whenever they mention a defender going up for a corner and then they go on to score. So they're more saying that, instead of it like actual match of the day, they're saying that all the games, what a load of waffle that is, how on earth can people commentate over games that are played in real life? because people turn up to, if they were played behind closed doors I'd question it but fans turn up at the same time that kickoff is and we watch it at the same time that kickoff is load of bollocks ignore that one number seven number seven number seven number seven number seven England England <laughs> and Germany worked together to get Uruguay and Argentina the 66 World Cup. In 1966, the World Cup quarterfinals featured England versus Argentina and Germany versus Uruguay. Apparently, Uruguay and Argentina representatives were invited to London for the referee selection, but when they had arrived, well, but, but when they arrived, it had already taken place, attended only by England and Germany officials. That's dodgy as fuck. A German ref was chosen for the England-Argentina match and an English ref for the Germany-Uruguay. There was controversy in both games with Argentina's Antonio Ratin being sent off for verbal excess and two Uruguayan players receiving red cards as well. That screams corruption in my eyes. And that's like the one mark that I've ever heard on the 66 World Cup that we actually won. The fact that they were invited for the referee selection and got there and it had already happened. And we chose a German one. And they chose an English one. Nah, I told you as fuck. Number eight. There's actually two number eights on this list. We'll go with it. Number eight. Nike paid Vitaly. Oh, right, we all know Vitaly the YouTuber. Vitaly. Uh, Zdorevsky. Wait, Zdorevsky. Yep, and he ran onto the pitch of the 2014 World Cup final. Right, let me see if I can. Uh, so 
So basically, this says that Nike sponsored him to do it. Um, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense now. Right, I've got the image here just for context. It says, with both finalists, Germany and Argentina being Adidas sponsored, the claim goes that Nike wanted in on the act by paying YouTube personality Vitaly to run onto the pitch wearing Nike boots, Nike, no, Nike boots and socks, which I can clearly see here. Nike was sponsors of Brazil, the host nation, so it's thought they would have no problems helping Vitaly get onto the Maracana turf. At Mar Maracana turf. I can see this image. And everybody is wrapped in Adidas. There's everyone's wearing an Adidas cap. Everyone's wearing an Adidas black top, black trousers, and black boots. Everything screams Adidas from the people that are restraining him and pulling him off the pitch. So if that's really what Nike intended, they've done a poor job of it. Because I couldn't identify them boots if I wanted to, unless, like this article has told me, that they are Nike boots. I wouldn't have known. The second, number eight, Champions League draws are rigged. The theory surfaces every year. Previously, it suggested that UEFA plan each fixture ahead of the draw and use hot balls to ensure the outcome as they plan it. Perhaps they're even more brazen with the draws now, though, with last December's calamitous ceremony seeing the last 16 draw redone after Man United were paired with Villarreal, despite both coming out of the same group. I don't think the draws are rigged. I think it's one of those where... The way that the seeding is done is that no team from the same country can be in the same group. So that already narrows down who can play who. Like if you've got the top six leagues and then a few others added into a pot, of course you're going to see very like common themes like Bayern Munich and Arsenal, Man United and Sevilla, them types of fixtures happening. If they keep getting put into the same pots, they're going to keep coming up against each other, especially because they're likely to also progress through. Like, if they don't get them in the groups, both teams are more like, like Chelsea by Munich, for example, or Chelsea Real Madrid. Both teams in the Champions League and Europa League or whatever are likely to get through to them later stages because of the teams that they are. So if it doesn't happen in the group stage and it doesn't happen in the round of 16, then more than likely both get into the quarterfinals. So of course, the probability of them facing each other throughout that whole selection process is going to be big because you've also narrowed down who they can't play against. So I don't think it's rigged. Number nine. 2022 World Cup venue was influenced by oil and money. No shit, Sherlock. Qatar was selected to host the 2022 tournaments back in 2010, with the event requiring the construction of new stadiums across the country. There have been allegations of corruption with regards to how Qatar won the hosting rights, and two FIFA executive committee members were even suspended ahead of the vote in relation to corruption allegations. FIFA is corrupt down to its core. There is no debate in it at all. Absolutely no debate in it. So, yeah, of course, they offered more money, they got it. Simple. Number 10. Number 10. Lasagna Gate stopped Spurs overtaking Arsenal in 2006. Spurs simply needed to match Arsenal's result on the final day of the 2005-2006 season to finish in fourth place. However, the night before their game against West Ham United, a number of key players fell ill after eating lasagna at the team hotel. Spurs 
Spurs ended up losing 2-1 to West Ham and relinquished their Champions League spot to their biggest rivals. Was the chef at the hotel a gunner? Gunner? Whatever. I don't think so. I just think it's one of those things where the whole team eats a meal. Like, if you really think about this, everyone has a big dinner. Like, all the players have a big dinner. I'm surprised that food poisoning doesn't happen more often. I mean, that sounds daft, I don't know, because they've got professional chefs that are being paid a fucking fortune to, to, to put on these meals for the players. But the fact that Lasagna Gate is probably the last one to have ever, like, popped up in recent years, of, like, memory anyway. Like, that, that's an infamous one. There might have been a few more. But you'd think, like, again, back to probabilities, you'd, you'd think that it happened once or twice since. I suppose. I don't know. I don't know. They all eat the same food. It's going to happen at some point. Fair dues. <sighs> 2020 was set up to make the English win. England benefited from playing six of their seven games at the Euro 2020 at Wembley. No other team in the tournament played more than three games in its home country. Spain and Ita uh, Spanish and Italian media also floated the idea that the officiating was rigged to help England win it. It has been totally conditioned for England, said a Spaniard. I mean, I don't know. I mean, think the home team always has an advantage no matter what country it's in. We saw that with South Africa. We've seen that with, like, Russia. Like, come on. And at the same time, it's been in Spain and France and Brazil and whatever. Meanwhile, Italian outlet Gazetta, oh yeah, because they're, they're, they're reliable, said the penalty England received against Denmark confirms the suspicions of a return to favour by UEFA to Prime Minister Boris Johnson for his role in stopping the European Super League. Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. But you say that England didn't even win it, so... <coughs> Number 12, number 12, number 12. This is the last one. Howard Webb helped Man United win. It says we will let Ryan Babble, who was fined £10,000 at the time, take this one. Webb was fraudulent, uh, frequently accused of assisting Man United. It was a sad day for the club when he retired in 2014. Okay, there's not really much information to that last one, but I, I remember a lot of the accusations that Howard Webb faced in terms of, you know, offering them, like, more t Fergie time was a big one. At the end of the games, they'd be given, like, four or five, at the time, like, four or five minutes at a time, which seemed a hell of a lot. Usually it was, like, a minute or two minutes max. Now we're into, like, the eight to twelve minutes is mental. But, uh, at the time, it was a big, big thing to offer, like, a lot of extra time and Howard Webb seemed to do it a lot. There was a lot of decisions that did go the opposite way and I don't know, it's just one of those things where it's just a lot of issues, a lot of accusations but I don't think anything could ever be proved unless one of the parties come out and admits it. That would be the only way that this theory is proved. Anyway, anyway, it's been your boy Luke. Call him ASMR, you know me. Please like and subscribe for more content. Please like and subscribe and I should catch you later.